Hey guys, Brian here. I just got done hiking the Lone Star Hiking Trail. I'm going to share with you what was in my pack. My hike was 7 days, 6 nights, with temperatures ranging from 40 degrees to 85 degrees. Uh, so your pack might vary based off different uh, aspects of your trip. Temperature, length, water is a big one on the trail too. So just plan accordingly and do your own research as well. Uh, the pack I'm using is the REI Flash 62. Um, I got it at the garage sale, uh, I think for like 80 bucks. The, uh, the thing that was wrong with it was one of the strap buckles was slightly broken. I didn't inspect it close enough when I look, looked at it, so I didn't think it would be a major issue, but it turned out to be a, a minor issue on the trail. Um, I took the brain off. Cause it comes with another thing up here. You can put more supplies. Um, but I took it off. I didn't need it. I can, I'm actually trying to transition into a smaller pack, like a 58 or a 52 liter. I also have a uh, trash bag in here to act as a barrier for rain instead of carrying a pack cover. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good pack. I wouldn't say it was the best. It's a little too big for me. I should have actually gotten one properly my size. This is a large, I should have gone with a medium, but again it was on sale and I just kind of wanted a better pack than the one I had, so, but overall it was pretty good. It's a nice light pack, um, I think it weighs like 48 ounces. I also added a, a 2 liter uh, platypus bladder in there as well. Uh, the issue I had on that Lone Star hiking trail last time was I ran out of water uh, pretty quickly. I only had about 3 liters. And it was really, really dry. I think there was during a drought that I went the first time, just for a two-night hike. Wound up only doing one night because such little water, and the trail was really poorly marked and maintained. Um, that's all since changed, though. But, um, moving on on the outside, I have the Thermarest ZC. Uh, I got it right before the trip. I didn't think it was super necessary first time I saw them, but. Uh, after just hearing a lot of people talk about them and how nice they were and what a like just kind of joy it was to have to be able to sit down on something soft, I cracked and I bought one. It only weighs like two ounces, and I definitely think it's worth it. I didn't use it all the time, but when I wasn't using it, it's because I was using it to help like balance my pack. Like right now, it's standing straight up. It's about to fall over, but uh, when it's fully loaded down, it'll tend to lean backwards like that. But with that pad on there also it also keeps standing straight up so that was also nice then I'd use it to lay my pack out flat on during the night between that and my shoes that I wore so it's just it was kind of all around a good investment I think and it's also nice too like when there's a bench or something flat and you want to add that to it it really helps makes it way more comfortable but yeah so uh, so I'm just gonna go down like I'm packing my pack so the first thing I put in was my sleeping bag, which again, I got a garage sale. This is not stuff that it comes with. I don't know if it comes with one. It's the REI, I think, summer bag or travel uh, sack thing. I'm not sure what it is. I got it at the garage sale. The zipper's broken on it. But I was supposed to experience lows of like 45. And from what I read, this thing's rated to uh, like 50 or 60 degrees, or 50 or 55 degrees. So I thought, why not? And then I also packed, just in case, some extra emergency blankets. I used one as a um, thing to lay underneath my tent, ground cloth. I used that every night. It worked pretty good. It got torn up a little bit. I don't know if I'd rec recommend it for a hike longer than a few hundred miles. But uh, that worked. And then I wound up also using the other emergency blanket on top of me over the sleeping bag. I only, like, I still got pretty cold, because it got cold than I was expecting. And I don't think this bag's rated for anything, it can't be any better than 55, so like 60 degrees, really. I took it out to 40 degree weather, the one that I woke up, it was 39 degrees, so. Uh, I definitely would bring my winter bag next time, if it gets any lower than 45. So. But with the emergency blanket, I was still able to sleep, and I was safe, and stuff. So it wasn't too bad of a time. Uh, my tent that I got is the REI Dash 2. I picked it up. It was on sale for $200. It's usually $300, $350. Uh, 
Yeah, so I picked it up with my tax return. Um, again, I used the thermal blanket as a ground cloth too. Um, it was it was a pretty good tent. It wasn't my favorite that I've used. I'm transitioning from hammocks too, so um, we'll see. I liked it. I wasn't crazy about using poles. It comes with poles, but uh, I don't know. I wanted a freestanding tent, that's what I was really wanting to save up for, but I kind of waited too long before I jumped on buying a tent. So I got this in the time being, I uh, thought to myself, if I don't like it, I'll just take advantage of the REI return policy, which I have never returned an item yet, and I really don't want to take advantage of it, because I hear a lot of people abuse it. And I thought, well, if I don't like it, I'll just return it, and I'll go get like either a tarp tent or a uh, Z-Pax tent. So, but I think I liked it good enough to keep um, just to let someone else use to get into backpacking. It weighs uh, 2 pounds 7 ounces. So I think a Z-Pax tent is like just like 5 or 6 ounces lighter. So, and then also then my trekking poles could break and then I wouldn't be able to use the tent. Or here I have the option of using those poles. So. Yeah, but I liked it. It was good for the trail. It does not breathe that well, though. Obviously, it seemed like every morning I'd wake up and there'd be condensation inside the tent to some degree. And the vestibules are not that big. Like, my pack would peek out a little bit. So, not the greatest tent, but if you can find it on sale, or at the garage sale, or at a cure trade, I think it's worth it. $200 especially. And then if you can get an REI and return it if you don't like it, I say why not. Uh, and then so I'd also pack the tent poles vertically, kind of between the side of the pack and the tent. That's kind of throwing the stakes. I didn't like putting them right in the same uh, bag as the tent just for, that way they don't puncture it. Um, so then after that, I'd actually put my food bag, which is a, this is all the food I had left over. I'm definitely overpacked and food wise. But I'd rather have more food than not enough for a seven day trip. So, I, uh, this is 13 liters of granite gear, dry sack. It's pretty good. It gets marked up really easily, though. I'm not sure what to make of that. But I kept all the food relatively dry. Um, I actually really need to empty this out it's probably going to stink when I open it. But yeah, 13 liters. I got my own carabiner or S beaner that I have from at work. And yeah, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, no animals really mess with my stuff. I only did a critter hang like three or four nights that I was out the other nights. I just kind of either slept with it in my tent or I would just set it on a bench that was made by the campsite or somewhere by the campsite. So no issues with it. Nothing to really report. It's my first food bag, so I'm not really sure what to make of it yet. Um, so I just kind of put that center standing up. And then usually my, my water bladder is flat right now, so it's kind of puff out a little bit making that stick out a little more, but no issues with the weight distribution. And then to the side of it, I'll pack my uh, Big Agnes Air Core. It's uh, 20 inches by 72 by 3.25 uh, inches, and it has an R value of, I think, around 4 point something, or just 4. And it was pretty nice. Um, I'm a side sleeper, so I definitely need the extra cushion. Um, and I definitely was really happy to have this help keep me extra warm. My feet kind of hang off a little bit, and I could definitely tell they got a lot colder touching the ground than the rest of my body was on top of this. So I definitely will keep this. It's on the heavier side than the like Thermarest Neo Air and all the really popular ones. But again, I got it at the garage sale for like 20 or 30 bucks because the owner didn't like the style of it. No problems with it, no punctures. It still has the puncture kit with it too. So for that price, I didn't see how I couldn't go with it. And then just, if anything, just upgrade later. So, especially since I'm still getting into backpacking. So I'll just kind of put that along the side. And then on top of that, I'll put my cook pot. Um, this is part of a larger kit. It's the, I got it again at the garage sale. It's uh, the REI cook pot set, cooking set. This is the smaller of two pots, and there's a lid that goes with it, and like some towels that go with it. The lid fits the bigger pot and this one, 
but because it fits the bigger pot, it hangs off a little bit, so I didn't bring it. So I wound up getting some uh, aluminum foil. I was kind of fashioned something that had thicker on this end, so I have a little handle. And I just kind of form it around the pot whenever I was boiling water for food. And it worked pretty well. It got a little hot sometimes to grab, but nothing terrible. And it worked well. Then inside of the pot, I'll keep my uh, MSR fuel for my pocket rocket. Uh, works out pretty well. I've used this, I guess, a total of almost like two weeks worth of camping, like 14 days worth of camping since I bought it. I still has a decent amount of fuel in it. I really debated buying another one before I went out because I didn't want to run out, but I uh, didn't need to, and it was still plenty of fuel. So I just put that on top of my uh, Big Agnes Air Corps. And then, since I touched on the cooking, uh, my cook pot, the MSR Pocket Rocket. Uh, good overall thing. Uh, I don't use a lot of stoves. So the first one I've really used. So I can't comment too much about it, but it's light. I think it weighs 3 ounces. It's got a real nice carrying case with it too. Uh, the first night though, I thought my fuel might be going out, but it turns out this middle thing will unscrew. So, uh, second day, all I do is just screw it, uh, make sure it was tighter and no issues with it since then. So just make, before I'd use it then, I would just make sure it was tight just to avoid that issue. Yeah. Then I also keep just a thing of uh, matches in there. I think they're waterproof. Yeah, damp climate, so not waterproof especially, but just kind of keep that in there just in case the lighter goes out. I just kind of stuff that down so it's kind of by the tent. Um, so then, with the rest of my cooking stuff, I have my REI Camper Spoon. It's part of a fork, knife, and spoon set, but I just took the spoon this time, just saves, it seems like an ounce or two, but, eh, makes life a little easier. That's all you really need anyway. And then my lighter, I think I had trouble with this like the last night, but it still works. Um, and my multi-tool, which I really just use the knife. I was really just going to bring my regular knife, but I couldn't find it, so I just brought the multi-tool. It weighs like four ounces extra, but whatever. And then I kept the top to my smart water bottle in case I had to uh, flush out my filter. Not a Snickers bar, it's just in there. I'll just kind of stuff that inside the cook pot as well. And then also have my electronic charging. So my main battery is the Anchor. I think it's like 10,500 milliamps or whatever it's called, MAH. Uh, I should get you about three charges, three to four charges for like the iPhone 6 or the Galaxy X6. I have the S4 and it gave me four charges pretty much exactly. Um, it's good. It weighs a little bit. I think it weighs like eight ounces. But to get four charges on it, it's, I think, worth it. Especially, I like to stay connected when I'm out there. Especially when I'm camping by myself, which is what I do a lot. Just kind of helps you with that peace of mind. Then I have a charger cable for my GoPro. I have another phone charger cable too. It's just your basic one. And then I have my Goal Zero one. Never wound up using it. But this was my, in case I couldn't get a ride or something happened, this was my emergency battery. Just so that way I knew I'd always have power if my phone went out and I needed to charge it. So, yeah. I'll just stuff that kind of down the center again. Um, and then clothing. So, I kind of had two outfits. Um, I had this Columbia shirt, This it's um, Omni Free Zero Sweat Activated Cooling, and this thing is phenomenal. Uh, the other synthetic shirt I had was just a cheap synthetic shirt from work, or my, from my old unit, and this thing blew the other one out of the water. You can actually feel the difference, which I didn't think it'd be, when I bought it, it was on sale, so I was like, yeah, why not, I'll give it a try. Some people I saw hiking the AT had it. 
and they liked it, and I figured it's at least worth it, I guess. But it's got these little, like, almost, like, beads in it, I guess, that I guess somehow make when you sweat, it actually helps cool you down more than just a uh, shirt that just absorbs it. So, so that was nice, but on the days I didn't, from extra clothing, I'll just again stuff that kind of on the other side of the dry bag. And then shorts, just a cheap pair of uh, Walmart running shorts that I had these since like, I've had these for probably five or six years now. And these are probably my favorite shorts. I have two pairs of them. Only brought one hiking with me. My other pair of shorts was a pair of Nike shorts with a uh, liner. And they were all right. I wound up just making them in my other synthetic shirt, my uh, camp clothes, since I didn't do as well with the sweat. And then uh, with those shorts, I just wore a... Uh, Adidas compression shorts that I picked up real cheap. Um, just kind of help keep everything clean down there. And then I had two pairs of socks. This pair was my darn tough pair. A um, little bit more expensive for socks, but I think they're definitely worth it. They come with a lifetime warranty. They're nice, good socks. Uh, I don't think they... No, they don't smell anymore. I gave them one wash. And then my... Yeah, so they were really nice. My other pair was uh, Smart Wool socks, and they were also pretty good pair. I have nothing to complain about them. But, uh, I don't know, darn tough, you get that lifetime warranty. So I was definitely really excited about that. Uh, in case you ever get like a hole in them or something, then you could just send it back to the factory and they'll send you another pair. So that uh, goes a long way with me. Um, I did develop two blisters, though. I guess kind of three, but the third one wasn't a big issue. I had one on the back of my left heel didn't bother me at all. I think I already had it from wearing boots at work. And then I had one on my middle toe, and that was kind of from my toenail going against it. So I just put some of that blister tape around it and it was fine. And then uh, third day, I had a big one, or a medium sized one, on my right heel, which on the fourth day turned into a bigger one. So I popped that one, and then the next night I had another big one, just kind of slightly above that. So I popped that one again, and then the last night I didn't pop anything because it was the last day. I didn't want to risk getting an infection again, so... Uh, but yeah, so I think that's more from my shoes or the insoles I had in them, which I'll go into later. Um, hygiene kit. It's really just uh, some OPSEC chapstick. Oh, my first aid kit which is a dryer lint, that blister tape, some eye drops, because I had a PRK surgery about a year ago, so just in case they got dry again, and some uh, yeah, Tylenol painkillers, and then some uh, Mucinex. I'll probably bring some band-aids though next time in case I get another blister on the toe. Uh, toilet paper, self-explanatory. Uh, travel size toothpaste with a cut off toothbrush. And then I did pack deodorant, didn't wind up really using it though. Just kind of slipped my mind the first two days, and after that I was like, yeah, whatever. So, but I put it on the last day, so I wouldn't stink so bad for the guy who was giving me a ride. So, and I'll just kind of put that on top again. And then for warmth, I have my military issue beanie. It's good. I also used that as like a pot holder when I was eating inside my tent. That way it wouldn't burn through the floor and that works it works great for that too. I kinda wear it I wear it at night, every night I wore it. And then in the morning sometimes I'd wear it too. When I started hiking, I'd take it off. Not even throw it inside the mesh or if I wasn't wearing it in the morning it'd be inside the pack. And then I uh, also wore this every night too, and occasionally when hiking in the morning. The military Ewix, I think it's the class two or three uh, cold weather shirt top, the waffle top as we call it. And this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. So now let's kind of pack that in there to help round it out. Um, and that would pretty much do everything I did in the main compartment. And I would just fold that so it would keep everything dry. Uh, so the first few days it was pretty tight, but after a while it got pretty roomy in there. Um, 
So in this outside mesh pocket, I have my trowel for digging cat holes. And I'll just uh, attach it to this little buckle right here. And then my camp shoes are the Teva sandals. They're pretty heavy, they're 12 ounces. Uh, I think like if I went with like, Crocs or something, they'd be lighter. But I just frankly like these better. Like, I don't know, they're just it's like a borderline luxury item. Because everyone, sandals are already kind of like a luxury item that mostly everyone brings. But I don't like flip flops. And I'm just not a fan of Crocs. So those are kind of like my best compromise between a camp shoe and something that I like. So a little bit heavier, but it's what I enjoy. And it never really affected the weight too much. Um, yeah, and then my rain jacket, the Marmot Precip. It only ever drizzled on this trip. Uh, my third morning, yeah, when I was in a state park, like from 4 to 6 a.m., it was kind of rainy. But after 6 a.m., it was fine. Um, and then it kind of drizzled throughout the day. But I, I didn't, I didn't ever put it on. I only put it on a few mornings when it was really cold, and I would just wear it when I woke up and started cooking breakfast and stuff. But then once I got active, I would take it off and just use my waffle top, and I'd be fine. Um, I had some rope to hang a uh, critter hang. Only used it like twice, I think. The other nights I didn't really need it. And then the state parks, they have hooks and stuff for you to put it on. So it wasn't really necessary, but between the marmot precip and the rope, I'm glad I brought them just because it's stuff I need to start doing, and the jacket provided warmth in the morning so and then the black diamond spot um, really good headlight nothing to really complain about uh, it's got three different features I think it even flashes too but uh, it's got a main light two side lights you can distinguish between those features and it's got a red light and I like to use the red light especially at night like when I'm on a campground just not to disturb anyone else and also kind of like keep my night vision so I can keep you know, just looking at the stars. I really like looking at the stars. Uh, and so, what I've learned, what I started off doing anyway, was keep keeping it kind of tethered to this outside clip. That way, because with these lights, if you keep them in a pack and they get pressed down on, you're going to turn on the lights. So, and you're going to waste battery. So, I would uh, start off all but like the last day, um, or second to last day, keeping on the outside. For some reason, like the second to last day, I put it on the inside of this pocket, and of course I open it up on that last day, or second to last or last night at camp, and it's turned on. So I don't know when it turned on, but it definitely wasted battery on a longer hike. That might have been an issue. Um, and then lastly, a uh, bandana. I wear this kind of like in the afternoon when it gets hot. That way the sweat's just not dripping down into my face and my eyes. It just kind of helps keep you more comfortable. And it just looks cool, I think. So, two part item there. Um, and then, lastly, on the outside, I have a platypus bladder, which I don't remember this had being an issue last time, but my filter, the Sawyer Mini, the threads do not match up with the platypus. So, that was a real bummer, and I wasn't aware of that problem. I thought that they matched. I think they did a while ago, but then I think platypus changed their threads. So they no longer match. I don't know why they would do that, but it was definitely not a smart business move by them. Because I'm not gonna be buying any more of these now. And yeah, but luckily I had a smart water bottle also, because these things are just indestructible. And I knew also the threads would match, so that was also a bonus. Um, so what I would do is, when I had to filter water, I would use this one and just kind of have it as my dirty water. And then I would just pour it into the smart water bottle after that was all gone. So, so this one was always pretty much full and this one would empty pretty quickly. But uh, there was only really one day though that I was struggling for water. Uh, but I'll go into that in a different video. But yeah, so smart water bottle. So I had about, this is just under a liter. So I had just under four liters with me the entire time. Um, and it was pretty doable. Only came, only ran out of water, not ran out, and had it por perfectly portioned. Uh, only emptied it all once though. And then this outside pocket, I just had things that I really wouldn't use all that often, but I still wanted to bring just in case. So first off was this sun hat. 
that I got at REI just for kind of summertime here in Texas. If I go floating or something. It also floats too, and it's got like UPF 20. Uh, it's nice, but I'm just not a fan of wearing hats when hiking. But the reason I brought it though is to go with this uh, bug net. And the last time I was out there in September, there was a bunch of bugs, and I was hammock camping, and I was miserable. I got bit up so bad. So, not only did I spray all my clothes with methrin before I left, which kind of worked, I also brought this just to protect my face. Never needed it. Never needed the bug net. I still wore my hat, though, a few times, just at night, when the bugs did start to come out. I also sprayed this with pinethrin, just to kind of keep them away. Um, again, I don't know if it worked or not, but it just kind of helped. It barely weighs anything, too. And then lastly, I brought some uh, gators because I know the trail does go in a bayou, like the last three sections are all bayou. And I just wanted these just in case. Uh, they're outdoor research, uh, I think Cascade, Mid, or Low Gators. That was not going to tell me. Unless Rocky Mountain Low Gators. Um, I've never, so I've never had to wear them, but I got them at the garage sale again, like 12 bucks. So, hey guys, sorry I cut off, uh, but just to finish off some of the things I, some other things I use, uh, the Cascade Mountain Tech Carbon Poles. They have foam grips. They also have the option for cork. Um, I got these because they were highly reviewed for their value, not the lightest poles, not the most well-reviewed, not the best customer service. I don't know anything about the company. Um, but they're definitely not the most expensive either. So between all those and the price, which was like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon, um, I definitely sprung for these. And I was really happy with them. I have no issues with them. Uh, really good poles. I kept the rubber tips on just because, oh, I, I don't know. Don't really have a reason to take them off. I kind of want to see if I can just preserve that tip uh, for other hikes. Um, and then on top of that, I had my GoPro mount uh, with the bike bar mount on it, or roll bar mount. Uh, and it's good. You got a little swivel room for when you want to do videos of yourself. Um, yeah. Really good poles. I recommend them. They're the first pole hiking poles I really used. So, and then for my shoes, I had the Speed Cross 3s by Solomon. Really good shoes. I saw in the AT, they're one of the most worn shoes last year. Uh, picked my at that garage sale again. Uh, really good shoes. I liked them. Uh, good toe box, good heel support. I'm not crazy about this speed lace system by Solomon. Uh, it doesn't, I think it saves me less time. It should be called the slow lace system. I'm not sure what to do with the thing, like once I cinch it down, like what do I do with the extra cordage? Do I like, I, I tuck it in the other laces. I don't know if there's a thing you're supposed to do with them. But yeah. And then, one thing I don't like about them is one of the things that I really like about them too is the tread. On sand, it's uh, really nice, like sand and loose dirt, but once you get on like asphalt and like roads and gravel, it's, oh, I hate it, it's so, t it's so bad on your feet, especially like the pads of your feet. Um, speaking of the pads of your feet, I do have super feet insoles in them. I'm not sure what big, much of a difference that makes, I've only worn these like, twice without super feet insoles and they were just real short runs like six miles I think and twelve mile a twelve mile hike and a six mile run. So um and I didn't really get a good report on those. On the one run though I did definitely feel the difference without the super feet when I was going or I didn't feel a difference, but I could feel again that tread problem when I was on like big rocks, I had to run over them. And I could feel the tread just like kinda going into the pads of my feet. So I might go with a, like a not as aggressive tread next time with my next pair of shoes, which I'll probably get the Brooks Cascadias. Whenever the new one comes out, I'll get the 11s since the 10s weren't any good. But uh, so that should complete my video on my gear used during the Lone Star Hiking Trail. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks.